section of chapter two. And this can be one of the trickier sections, uh, getting into weighted averages. The biggest thing is to think through it, make yourself a table, and set yourself uh, an equation up. Uh, the biggest thing is that equation, getting that equation set up properly and, and going through and solving it. That's the toughest part. Well, a weighted average, first of all, um, can be found by taking the sum of the product of the number of units and the value per unit divided by the sum of the number of units. That's kind of the basic thing. We're going to do some other things with weighted averages besides just that. Uh, but an example in real life is like slugging percentage in baseball. All right, because if you get a single compared to a double, compared to a triple, compared to a home run, they're all worth different when they find their slugging percentage. They're weighted differently. A single is weighted per one, double two, triple three, a home run four. Um, so when they find that slugging percentage, they got to take an account to what type of, of hit they got. Um, so usually the power hitters have a higher slugging percentage, but they use a weighted average to find that. Our first kind of weighted average problem are going to be our mixture problems. These are the ones where we want to set up a table. So a mixture problem is where we want to combine two or more parts to make a whole. So for example, here we got coffee. We have premium coffee, supreme coffee, and we're going to mix them together to make a blend. So, and the reason why we do that is, okay, the premium coffee is cheaper, supreme is more expensive. We want to make something affordable that tastes good, so we're going to combine them both. Well, how many pounds of premium coffee beans should be mixed with two pounds of supreme coffee to make that blended coffee to get them at that exact cost. This is where it gets just a tish confusing. So first of all, I'm going to set up a table. I'm going to have my premium coffee here. I'm going to have my supreme coffee right here. And then my blend over here. That's how I'm going to start off. Well, one thing we know is we know the amount. The amount of coffee we're going to use. Well, and they're what? It's in pounds. Okay, well, which one do we know? We know the supreme should be two pounds. So I can go ahead and I can put two for the supreme. We don't know how many premium. So if we don't know something in math, we give it a variable. So I'm just going to give it x. Well, that means the blend would have these two combined. So really, it's x plus two. Right? You're adding them together, the premium plus the the Supreme would give you your total uh, pounds of coffee for the blend. We also know one other thing about this, the cost. We know the cost. We know the premium costs 950, so 9.5. We know the Supreme costs 1175, and we know that the blend costs ten dollars. If I know the amount and the cost, and when I say cost, it's the cost per pound. Well, I could find the total cost now, couldn't I? The total cost of each because the total cost would be my cost times how many pounds of coffee I have. And I don't know how many pounds, so I say X pounds for the premium. So the Supreme, it costs 11.75, and I know I have two pounds of that. And for the blend, it's $10 per pound. I could just put 10, right? Times the amount which is x plus 2. So I'm going to take it times that entire amount, times x plus 2. So it needs to go in parentheses. I'm taking that whole amount. And if I think about how this works, I'm going to take the premium coffee, and I'm going to add it to the supreme coffee to equal my blend. So there's my equation. I take the total cost of the premium plus the total cost of the supreme, and I can multiply that right away, 1175 times 2, which gives us 2350. 23.5, and that's going to be equal to my blend's total cost, which I can distribute here, right? 10 times x, 10x, and 10 times 2, plus 20. So that's where my equation comes from, okay? Figure out how the amount of each mixture, of each part of that mixture, figure out the cost of each, do the total cost by multiplying your, you know, your cost times how many you have of each, and then go ahead and set that up. So the premium plus the, the supreme equals our blend. And now it's just our algebra, getting our variable to one side. So I got to subtract 9.5x from both sides. And I want to get the x by itself, so I'm also going to have to subtract 20 from both sides to get rid of that 20 on that side. And after I do that, I'm left with 3.5 equals 0.5x, and that's gone. 
and then I'm going to divide by 0.5 on both sides. So 3.5, we'll rewrite this up here so we can see. So 3.5 equals 0.5x, so divide by 0.5 on both sides, you get x by itself. So x would equal 7. And what is that x? That's the, the pounds of premium coffee, right? So 7 pounds of premium. And is that what we're trying to find? I believe so. So I think we're done. 7 pounds of premium coffee. So 7 pounds mixed with 2 pounds will give us that exact blend at $10 per pound. Um, and I wouldn't be wasting any money there. Okay, we could also use a mixture um, given percentages. So a car's radiator should contain a solution of 50% antifreeze. Bo has 2 gallons of 35% antifreeze. How many gallons of 100% antifreeze should he add to that to get that mixture of 50%? So when I set this up, I always put the mixture at the end of your table. So I have, a, I'll, this is what I want to get is the 50%. That's my mixture, right? So that's going to go at the very end, a 50% mix. And I have 35%, that's already in there, and I'm going to add a 100% mix to try to get that mixture of 50%. Okay, so let's think about this. Let's go with the amounts right away. I know I have two gallons of 35%. See, this is the gallons, the amounts. I don't know how much of the 100% I'm putting in. So the mixture would be those two combined, right? Added together. What else do I know? I know the percent, don't I? I know the percent. Well, when we use uh, percents to do arithmetic, we always change them to a decimal. So I'm going to change... My percents to decimals here. I'll just put decimals. So this is really 0.35. This is point, well, it's 1.0, isn't it? So it's 1. And this is 0.5. Because to find uh, a decimal from a percent, we just move it 2 to the left. So 35% becomes 0.35. Move our decimal 2 to the left. And so now I can figure out the total amount of antifreeze. The total amount of antifreeze given. I have two gallons of the 35%. So to find how much antifreeze that is, it's really 0.35 times two, I multiply it. So two gallons times that 0.35 to figure out how much total antifreeze. And then we're gonna add that on to our 100% mixture, which we're gonna put in. So that's one times X, which is really just X, isn't it? I'll write that for now, but. And that's gonna equal our mix, which we wanna to get to, which is 0.5 times the amount that we have in. So this will figure out. So our mixture, we have the 35% at two gallons. We're adding some 100%, which we don't know yet, will give us our mixture of, of exactly 50% antifreeze, which we need in our car. So this is kind of a real life situation that could happen to figure out what kind of mix you need to put in. And let's go through our math. So 0.35 times two gives us 0.7, and one times x is just x, and I can distribute this 0.5. So half of 2 is 1 plus 0.5x. Well, we get our x to one side. So this one's smaller, so I'm going to subtract the 0.5x. Subtract half an x. I'm going to just do that part first. So bring my 0.7 out. Take, take away half an x from an x. I'm left with half of an x, aren't I? 1 minus 0.5 gives me 0.5x. Bring my 1 down, cross those out. This is really an imaginary 1 in front of that x, right? 1 minus 0.5x. And then we subtract 0.7 from both sides. So we're left with 0.5x equals 0.3. Divide by 0.5 on both sides. And x would equal 0.6. So what is that? 0.6 what? 0.6 gallons, isn't it? I'm putting in 0.6 gallons of 100% mixture, or 100% antifreeze to find my mix of 50%. So the biggest thing is setting up that table, setting up that table and figuring out how to get that equation set up for those mixtures. Okay, now we're going to get a little weighted average um, into our uniform motion, our, our rate problems. And the one that we're going to deal with the most is a, is a distance rate and time, our DIRT formula. I think I talked about our DIRT formula already, right? D equals RT, distance equals rate times time. Well, let's take a look at this one. 
Two cyclists begin traveling in opposite directions on a circular bike trail that is five miles long. One cyclist travels 12 miles per hour, and the other travels 18 miles per hour. How long will it be before they meet? Okay, these ones, a lot of people hate these things. I think they're just so confusing by the reading through that. Like, oh my gosh, where do I start? Well, what I usually do, I like to draw a picture to help me visualize what the heck is going on. So I got two cyclists. They're starting from the exact same spot on a circular track. So here's a circular track. One's going one way. Well, let's just see. How, how big is that track? It says it's five miles. It's a five mile track. So I know I got a five mile track. One's going one way. Boom, this way. And he's traveling at 12 miles per hour. And the other's going the other way. And he's traveling at 18 miles per hour. And eventually they're gonna meet at some point, aren't they? They're going 18 miles per hour. Well, I have an equation for distance, don't I? Distance equals rate times time. And if I think about it, my green cyclist here is going 18 miles per hour. So if I took his distance, I'm just going to say D1 for distance of the green guy, D1, first guy. And I added it to the distance of the second guy, who's going 12 miles per hour. Wouldn't that equal my total distance of 5 miles? Right? Added the distance of the one, added the distance of the other, they're going to meet. That's the entire track, isn't it? Well, if I didn't draw that picture, I don't know if I could visualize that. Well, we know how to find distance. Rate times time, don't we? So if I think about this for the green guy, its rate is 18 times the time, which we don't, we don't know. So I say T, since I don't know it, plus the distance of the blue guy. Well, he's going 12 miles per hour at T time. They're going the exact same amount of time, right? They're just going to meet somewhere. So the same time, so I can use T for both those, and that equals 5. Well, I can solve this, can't I? So basically all I did was I used my equation, distance equals rate times time to find the distance of each guy, and those added together equal 5. But that drawing that picture helps out. So now I think 18t plus 12t gives me 30t equals 5. And to solve for t, we divide by 30. So t equals 1 6. Well, what the heck does 1 6 mean? And what does t stand for? Well, if I think about this, both these rates were miles per hour. So that's going to be 1 6 of an hour. Or I can convert that. Does it ask me if I need hours or minutes? How long will it be before they meet? No, 1 6 hour is fine. Or I could have said, what, 10 minutes? That's a sixth of an hour. Took 1 6 times 60. So either one of these two is fine. 1 sixth of an hour or 10 minutes. Okay, but I'm telling you, draw that picture. Use your dirt formula. Distance equals rate times time. Um, in this case, we added them together to that total, total distance. Sometimes you set them equal to each other, depending on the situation. Uh, but drawing the picture always helps. All right, there you go. Get after those weighted averages.